Welcome back to the channel. This week's video is all about the bootstrap carousel and implementing it with Hugo. I'll also look at a number of tweaks to get it to work a little bit better. Before we get started, a quick message from this video's sponsor. As a Skillshare teacher, I've partnered up with them to offer you a free one month trial using my link below. I personally produce full length Hugo courses on many different Hugo topics on Skillshare. And there are many other great teachers on Skillshare ready to help you level up your skills for your next big project. Click on the link below for the one month free trial, access all my courses and you can cancel at any time. You'll also be supporting this channel. To show you have the latest version of Hugo and Visual Studio Code installed and set up, you can check my video on Hugo installation, I'll link that above. And on completion of this video, you'll be able to implement the Bootstrap 5 carousel and you'll also be able to iterate over arrays generating index keys. I've left the link below to the repository for this tutorial. If you click on the link to get started, you'll be on the Start Here branch and you can download the code with the green code button. The easiest way is to download a zip file, otherwise you can clone the whole repository or open it in GitHub Desktop. I've also left a link for the completed tutorial and that's in the master branch or you can just follow the link. The first thing we're going to look at is how to generate an index key for each iteration when using the range. I've left a link to this page in the description below. There's an example here and it shows you how you can not just range over an array but generate an index and a value variable. The reason we're generating an index is so we get the number of the actual iteration. It starts at zero, that's why it's called an index. And each time we go to each next step in the array, our index increases by one. And we're gonna do an example of that right now. So what we'll do is we'll copy that example. And I'm in the files that you would have downloaded from GitHub, or you can do it in your own Hugo project. I'm just gonna go into the index.html for now. I'm going to make a new section and then a container, row and column using bootstrap. I'm going to paste that code in and to get it to work we're going to have to make an array. We dollar sign array colon equals and we'll do slice We'll start at zero, zero, one, two, three. And then we're going to be ranging over it. And then, it, and then let's have a look at the results. I'm gonna put a new line in for each, after each result. So we'll save that and we'll have a look at how we're generating the index and each step and also the value, and the values are coming in from the slice here, so the value should be 0, 1, 2, 3, written, and the index itself should be the number. So we'll open up a new terminal, and we'll run Hugo server, and there's the results there. There are indexes, the, ze the actual digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, and the actual value is the written 0, 1, 2, 3. So we're going to use that quite a lot throughout this example in this video with the carousel. The next thing to look at is how to access page resource images. All the images have been stored as page resources and that makes our life a lot easier. Let's have a look how it works. So in the content folder you'll see we have our underscore index.md and that's for our home page and beside it I've stored four images. Let's go through now and let's have a go at accessing them. So we'll start off by initializing a variable, we'll call it images, colon equals, and we'll do dot resources with a capital R, dot by type, capital B, capital T, and the type will be images. And that's going to get all of the image resources from the index page, which you can see there's four there. Next we're going to do is a range images and we'll pop the end tag in straight away and inside that range we'll do an image tag and the source will be dot rel permalink so at each step of the range we're going through one of the images and dot rel permalink will create a relative permalink 
to that image. So we'll save that and have a look. So for the code we just wrote, we're going to make a new variable. We're going to initialize it, and it's going to be called images colon equals. That's how we initialize. And we're going to use dot resources dot by type. Make sure you've got capital R, B, and T. And the type will be image. So it's going to grab all of the images that sit next to our underscore index.md. Index.md is for our homepage, and these are all the images associated with it. And what we'll do is we'll do a range. And we'll range over images. And we'll put in a n tag. And then at each step of the way, we'll put an image tag in, and to access the image, the link to it will be dot rel permalink. That will create a relative permalink to the image. We'll put a class in. Let's do img fluid. We'll also put in padding bottom of three. So now we've got our images all appearing. Right click and check the source. You can see how they're all being pulled in. We've got a relative permalink. We've got our class, and we've got our padding below to space them out. Let's have a look now at adding the index to each image that we've just looked at. So what we'll do, we'll get rid of that code. And this time we'll do range index comma value colon equals. That's going to generate an, a variable for index and a variable for value. So instead of dot rel permalink, and this is optional, you can put in dollar sign value, but you don't have to. You can still access the value without the dollar sign value. But over in alt, we're going to do image, and then we'll do dollar sign index. And we'll have a look. So right click and inspect. You can see we've got image O, image 1, image 2, image 3. So that's how our index is working. It's starting at 0. Let's set it to start at 1 for the alt. So we'll do a bit of mass. We'll do add index and 1. We'll save that and have a look. And now it's starting at 1. So we've added 1 to the index. And that's a very common operation. So let's now look at how to implement the Bootstrap 5 carousel the skills we've just learnt. So I've left a link to the Bootstrap 5 carousel page down in the description. I'm going to scroll down. And we're going to have a go at the example that's got controls and indicators. You can delete the parts that you don't want. We're going to highlight all of that code. We'll copy and paste it in. We'll put it below the range we just did. Now the bottom part there, we can put a bit of space in because we're going to leave that as is for now. But where it gets tricky is the indicators at the top because we've got to set the first one to active. JavaScript won't do that for us. And we've also got to set our first image to active. So what we'll do is we'll get our code for ranging over our images slice or array. And we'll copy that. We'll pop it in above our indicators. And then at the end of our indicators, we'll put in an end tag. Let's go through now and have a look at what the difference is between the indicators. So we can see that slide one and two, they're identical. So we can get rid of the third, the second, the third one, which is slide two. So I'm going to have a look at what the difference is between the first and second, and they're called slide zero and one, and that's quite handy because that's how we can generate that with an index. You'll notice we've got class active and aria current true, and that doesn't exist on the second one. And what that is, the class of active is for display, and aria current true is for screen readers. So the screen reader or the assistive technology knows which slide's being displayed. So here's how we're going to set it. To start with, for the slide two, we can put a double curly braces in and we can put index and that will be generated by the range. 
it'll start at zero. It then says slide one. Now, if you want slide one to be on there, what you've got to do is, like we just did, open your curly braces, add dollar sign index one. That's a pretty simple description, but it'll work. And then we've got this text here, which we don't want to display on subsequent slides. So what we'll do, is we'll use a conditional, we'll do if eq dollar sign index zero, so that's for the first slide. Then we'll display these two. And we'll leave a space at the end. And then we'll put in our end tag. Now you've got to be careful. You notice we've got a space before the curly braces, and then we've got our class. So we don't, you could put a space in there, it doesn't matter, but we've got a space before. But then we haven't got a space at the end. But that's all right because we've got a space here. So it's really important you look at all your spaces and you check your output because if things, if there isn't a space where there should be, the HTML won't work. So we can delete that second line now. So that's all going to be generated by range. And if you want, you can put things on multiple lines, but you've just got to be careful that you don't cut any of the Hugo commands in half, especially between inverted commas. Then we'll go down to the actual slides. So we'll pop our range in and then our index. And then you'll notice the only difference is the active. So what we'll do, do the same thing. You can even copy and paste the code. You'll notice I've got that space before active. So put the space in, otherwise our classes will be put together and they won't work. Put our end tag in. Now image, as we discussed, value.rel permalink. You could leave the value off and you could make it just .rel permalink. It will still work. It'll just be like a normal range without declaring the variables for the index and the value. But I like to put it in there just to make it nice and clear. And we're going to put in a class of img-fluid. And for the alt text, we'll put in the slide one, two, three, four, and so on. You can now delete the additional slides. We'll get rid of that extra space. And then we'll delete the range. We cannot delete the where we've initialized images because we've declared images as our actual page resource images. That needs to stay. Get rid of some spaces, save that, and we'll have a look. All right, let's have a look. A few things will change. You'll notice the aspect ratio of some of these images is a bit different. So we'll go through and we'll set it up so that they all generate at the same aspect ratio. The other thing is it's a little bit too wide on the full screen. If it's on a narrow device, I think it's fine. Especially if you bring it down to a mobile device. Works quite well, but we'll make it a bit smaller on larger screens. We'll add some margin to the bottom and then we'll fix the aspect ratio. The first thing we'll do is actual carousel. We'll do MB5 for some margin at the bottom. And then for the col, we'll do col-lg-9 and col-xl-8. And then for the row, we'll do d dash flex and justify content center. That way our column is centered if it's smaller than full screen. So we'll save that and have a look and then we'll look at changing the image aspect ratio. So we're larger than medium. You can see we've now looking at nine column width. If we bring it down to medium, it's the full width of the container. As you go down to extra small, it's the full width of the page. We've just got to work out how to get all of the images into the same aspect ratio so that the carousel doesn't jump around. First thing we'll do up the top where we've assigned images, we'll create a new variable called ratio. 
file and equals and we'll use a slice and this is where we set the aspect ratio that you want to apply to all the images and for now we'll do three space two which is just like six by four for example we'll then go through under the second range and this is the range where the images are being produced so we'll start with the width and we'll just keep the width constant we'll keep it as it is already so the way we do that is width colon equals and it will be dollar sign value dot width with a capital W and Hugo will extract the width for us out of the image. So for our height we're going to, have to work out the ratio of the width to the height based on the ratio we've defined up here. So we're going to divide the two by the three. So that we'll put in our curly braces and we'll initialize a new variable. We'll call it height ratio capital R and we'll do colon equals and we'll do divide and to access the two we'll use in brackets index dollar sign ratio one and we'll convert it to a decimal so we'll use pipe and then float and then we'll copy all that text in the brackets and we'll paste it in and we'll change the one to a zero so we're targeting the three We'll then go ahead and we'll work out the height for the image based on the width, which is fixed, and the ratio that we've worked out. So we'll dollar sign height, colon equals, multiply the width by the height ratio, and we'll convert it to a whole number, pipe and then int for integer. We can then go ahead and do the resize, and We'll call that fill because we're using the fill function with Hugo. So fill colon equals value dot fill with a capital F. And what we have to provide to Hugo is the width times the height with no spaces. The way we'll do that is we'll use printf. So put some brackets in, printf, put in our template, so be percent d x percent d and then a space after your inverted commas and we're going to pass in width dollar sign width and dollar sign height instead of value it'll be dollar sign fill because that's our resized image with the new aspect ratio so we'll save that and have a look so now we have all of our images lining up with the same aspect ratio and it makes the carousel much better and it saves you going through and manually cropping every single image. So that's it for this week's video. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you get notified every week when I release new videos and hit that thumbs up button if you like the video. Bye for now.